Sudan has been politically paralyzed since the coup with almost daily protests and authorities have launched a major crackdown on protesters. For more on Sudan's protest, I'm joined by John Tanza, host and managing De editor of the South Sudan in Focus radio program. John, a very warm welcome back to Africa 54. Thank you, Esther. Uh, first of all, let's start with the internet and the mobile signal being shut down. How will protesters reorganize themselves to be able to continue pressuring the military coup leaders to step down? I mean, in this uh, digital era, the activists in Sudan have found ways of circumventing, uh, if you like, communication blackout. You know, the VPN, a lot of people in Sudan use VPN, and the word of mouth. It's also, it travels very fast in Sudan. You know, people communicate with one another. And these grassroots uh, civil society groups are well organized. They, they have been coordinating the protest on a daily basis. And so I don't think any internet blackout will prevent them from coming back to the streets. John, these protests have gone on for months. And I'm just wondering, what other strategy can the demonstrators employ to pressure these uh, military leaders to move out of power? Sudanese have been known for toppling their government via street protests. Uh, Nimeri was overthrown because of street protests. Ibrahim Aboud was overthrown because of street protests. Um, these people are going to stay on the streets until their demands are met. No, I mean, the, the question of how long doesn't matter to most uh, activists in Sudan. I mean, the, the people we speak to say people are fed up. The economic situation has not changed. Uh, the, the coup leaders promised a lot for the Sudanese people, but they are not uh, delivering those promises. And that's why people are saying enough is enough. Go back to the barracks. So many people have lost their lives. So many people have been maimed. So many Sudanese have left the country because of all this chaos, these protests and uh, the military leadership in the country. Uh, what motivates them to keep going on? The need for change is one motivation in Sudan because the Sudanese people were you know, going through all sorts of life under Bashir's 30 years of rule. When Bashir was overthrown, the common feeling all over Sudan was that change was coming, change was coming with a lot of benefits, services, and opened the country up to the international community, but they are seeing the opposite, and that's why people are on the streets demanding, asking the military to go back to the barracks. How has this unrest affected the region, say, South Sudan, Ethiopia there, and Egypt? I mean, Sudan is a, a main economic hub, business hub for South Sudan, because South Sudan is landlocked. And so any instability in Sudan trickles down to price hikes in the markets. It trickles down to insecurity along the borders. You cannot travel freely. And there are people who have families in South Sudan and some are in Sudan. So it also affects them emotionally. So what, are, what is happening in Khartoum has an impact on a lot of people in South Sudan. In Egypt, of course, Egypt is interested in stability along the Nile. You know, any country along the Nile that is not stable, Egypt will want to come in to make sure that all is good. They can do business as usual. And the women have been at the forefront, I have to say, of this protest, Correct. including very Correct. young. A lot of women have been in the forefront, and uh, there have been also a lot of crackdown on women activists. For instance, a member of a communist party was just arrested on Thursday in Khartoum after returning from uh, Kauda in the Nubu Mountains. They went and met the leader of the SPLM north of the Raziz al Hilo. So these are, these are continuing uh, crackdown on activists. 